we have some breaking news. Dennis Donaldson, the former senior Sinn Féin... Sinn Féin official Dennis Donaldson has been found shot dead near Glenties in County Donegal. Mr Donaldson was the man... At... Three weeks ago, the British agent and Sinn Féin official Dennis Donaldson was found murdered in this remote cottage. The ramifications of his killing go far beyond this part of rural Donegal. What is clear is that many people could have a motive to kill the man who for over 20 years spied for special branch and military intelligence. Tonight, Spotlight examines the last days of Dennis Donaldson, and we ask why the lifelong Republican who betrayed his colleagues really believed it was safe to stay in Ireland. Gardaí say they have an open mind, but the blame game is well underway. It was done simply by a unit of the now so-called defunct provisional IRA. It has all the hallmarks of, of, a, of a, an assassination bid on, a, on a, what they would regard as the lowest form of life, a tout, an informer. But Sinn Féin reject that. Nobody here thinks that Republicans or the IRA were involved in the murder, murder of Dennis Donaldson. I was a British agent. I have worked for British intelligence and the RUC PSNI special branch. The fact that he was a traitor means that uh, his death did not engender any particular sense of loss or deep grief, grief amongst the Republican faith. And it seems his killers knew exactly how to find him. Dennis Donaldson was a sitting duck for the IRA to take him out any time was unfinished Northern Ireland business that was concluded in this state. Whoever killed Dennis Donaldson has killed before. No, Will the full truth about his many roles ever be told? What happened happened, and that's it. Right? Glenty's West Donegal. For the last three months of his life, this was Dennis Donaldson's home since his fall from grace last December. After he admitted to being a British spy for 20 years, he came here to this pre-famine cottage on a single track road. It was a Spartan lifestyle. With no running water or electricity, it was a world away from the life he used to lead. Steeped in republicanism, he was Jerry Adams' eyes and ears at Stormont. As Sinn Féin's assembly administrator, he was a party man who was popular with all political groups. He was a very affable, friendly guy, you know. He would have come into your office if uh, Sinn Féin were seeking support on something. He would have sat down at someone's desk, you know poked through whatever papers were lying on it, flicked through their Rolodex, and you kind of looked at him, but it was, it was only Dennis, so no one really minded it. No one regarded him with anything, as anything other than what he said he was. But that all changed in 2002, when power sharing at Stormont was suspended over allegations that a spy ring was operating, involving Dennis Donaldson, his son-in-law, Kieran Kearney, and William Mackesy. But last December, the case against all three was surprisingly dropped. The Public Prosecution Service said it was not in the public interest to continue with the case. My name is Dennis Donaldson. Days later, Dennis Donaldson dropped his own bombshell. I was a British agent. I was recruited in the 1980s. I've worked for British intelligence and the RUC PSNI special branch. The reason for the collapse of the Stormgate case became clear after Dennis Donaldson's admission. The Crown needed to keep the role of informer secret and there were a series of other matters that the security services and the PSNI wanted to protect. Two months ago, Spotlight revealed that the Crown wanted to keep secret certain fingerprint evidence. One source told us that the fingerprints of a special branch officer and the fingerprints of another informer were found on the Stormont Gate documents that were discovered at Dennis Donaldson's house. So rather than reveal secret special branch operations or the identity of informers, the PSNI then asked for the case to be dropped. Hours after his televised confession, Dennis Donaldson disappeared. 
Normally, police informers are offered protection by the state. If Dennis Donaldson was offered a new life, it appears he rejected it. He knew his betrayal had harmed Republicans, but Republicans said they wouldn't harm him. Can he return to Belfast? He can do whatever he wants, uh, frankly, uh, and that's something that, that he has to work out. Um, whether he will return to Belfast or not is something that only he can answer. Uh, I mean, we shouldn't be naive. This is um, in, in, in Republican and nationalist terms, well, even in Irish terms, uh, to be an informer is, is pretty bad stuff. You know? I mean, 15 or 20 years ago, he may have lost his life. That's true. So is he safe to return to Belfast? Absolutely, he is. There is no. Uh, he, he has no fear from um, Republicans. Despite Jerry Kelly's reassurances, Dennis Donaldson stayed away from Belfast, and he headed for familiar territory. For years, the Sinn Féin activists had escaped the hustle and bustle of political life by retreating to the hills of Donegal. It was here he came at the start of the year. The cottage outside Glenties was a family holiday home and Donaldson had stayed there many times. Alone with few home comforts, this was to be his new life. He became a regular sight in the nearby village of Glenties calling in for meals and provisions. And he occasionally came here to buy fuel. He just came in to, for, to buy a bag of coal and came in and just paid for it. He's very quiet, didn't say very much, and just paid for his coal and left again. Didn't hear anybody talking about him or anything. Just knew that that's who he was, whatever he had done. That was, didn't matter, he was just a customer coming in. We're very used to lots of people from Northern Ireland coming in here on a weekly basis, weekend. Many Northern Ireland people have holiday homes here. So it's nothing unusual to have people from Northern Ireland living around and no one pays much attention as to who they are. So why did Dennis Donaldson go to Donegal? What seems apparent is that he stayed in Ireland in the belief that the IRA posed no threat to him. His televised confession may offer some clues he showed no signs of disloyalty and endorsed the Sinn Féin line over Stormont Gate. I was not involved in any Republican spy ring in Stormont. The so-called Stormont Gate affair was a scam and a fiction. It never existed. It was created by special branch. Some Republicans were puzzled over Donaldson's Donegal move. One would have to wonder why he did remain in the country so long. I mean, uh, you would have assumed, considering all that occurred, having effectively, by his own admission, outed himself as a traitor, that staying in, in Ireland, especially in rural Ulster, wouldn't have been the most sensible option for him. Others believe the former Sinn Féin official went to Donegal simply because his options were limited. It does look as if he wasn't a wealthy man, he didn't uh, you know, have, have the funds to you know, to, to, to go to Tenerife or whatever. Uh, he, uh, he, had, he had quite an old car. He didn't show signs of wealth. I've been told by some people who knew him, he smoked roll-ups, for instance. And uh, he, perhaps he, he just had no choices. He had to take the accommodation that was available to him. So did he strike a deal with the IRA by giving them details about his spying in return for living unharmed in Donegal? Dennis Donaldson may have decided that he had to play a, a balancing game, uh, a balancing act. On the one hand, tell the IRA enough to s placate them, and on the other hand, not tell them some of the more nefarious activities. If, for example, and I don't know, but if, for example, he had IRA volunteers killed, he might want to withhold information of that nature in case uh, IRA understandably enough would be serious. So when he went to live in Donegal, you believe he went feeling safe. Why else would he go? Gardy and Glenties were aware of Dennis Donaldson's presence. The cottage was well known to them. Spotlight has discovered that it was searched in 2002 during the Stormont Gate inquiry. 
when donaldson arrived this year officers called on him and told him to contact them if he had any trouble details of his new life became known and six weeks ago news reached sunday world reporter hugh jordan last month he set off to try and find him one day in belfast i met a man who had been in Sinn fein funnily enough with Dennis Donaldson, he'd been a Republican with him some years ago and knew him well. And he mentioned to me that Dennis Donaldson either owned or had access to this house uh, in West Donegal, but he didn't know where it was. He thought it was somewhere uh, in that general Blue Stack Mountains area, which was broadly enough known to me. And uh, he had been there with him. I made a number of inquiries there locally. And within three hours, I found Dennis Donaldson's home. But how difficult was it to physically find his home? Well, it was difficult enough because I was up and down highways and byways, uh, small single track roads, and eventually I was led to believe that it was on the road to Dukhri, which is a Gaelic speaking area there. So I, I checked all the roads to Dukhri, and lo and behold, I, I see his, his car parked outside this small cottage. Uh, Hugh Jordan met Dennis Donaldson outside his cottage. The encounter was secretly recorded by a former RUC officer who now works as a security consultant. I was thinking that the press conference in Dublin was so short that you never get a chance to say too much. Well, what I said was what I said. Uh, well, what holds for the future for you now then? Well, this is OK. And then you go. Huh. Initially, and I was there a total of 14, nearly 15 minutes. Uh, initially, it was like drawing teeth, trying to speak to him. But he settled down, and uh, then he, he opened up. When he did speak about Stormont Gate, Dennis Donaldson again supported Sinn Féin's version of events. There was never a spy ring in Stormont. I said you say, man. Uh, uh. And uh, in there is the, the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. What was all that? What were they at? What was that about? Mm -hmm. There was never a spy ring at Stormont. The agenda is quite obvious. It was uh, collapse the institutions and get Republicans at the end, get the tremble off of it. Did he seem to be relaxed to you? The longer the conversation went on, he seemed relaxed. Nice sweet place, I've got. It's alright. A bit different from Stormont. He didn't seem frightened or Oh, haunted. he did, he did, he did. There was, there, he was relaxed with me, but he was a lost soul. I said, will you ever go back to Belfast, to your home, to your family? And he said, I don't know, I might. Four days later, Hugh Jordan's conversation with Dennis Donaldson became a Sunday World exclusive and made headlines in Ireland and beyond. The Sunday World article didn't reveal the location of his cottage, but a press association report which was used by other newspapers did mention the town of Glenties. I got the sense that that man was living there, anticipating a next move in his life. He appeared to be a man who was not in control of his future. And I think the events that subsequently took place bear that out. If I had been him in his position, I would have left Donegal within hours of myself or another reporter calling to see him. Now Dennis Donaldson had a choice, move on or stay. He told Hugh Jordan that now his whereabouts were known, he would be leaving. Well, I'm not going to stand here too long now. What can you do now? I don't know. Dennis Donaldson decided to remain in his cottage. The day after the Sunday World article appeared, I travelled here to Glenties with a colleague to see if Dennis Donaldson would record a television interview. We knocked on his door, and to our surprise, he was still inside. We introduced ourselves and asked him if he would talk to us, but he refused. So we placed our business cards at his door and then left. Dennis Donaldson's decision to stay in Donegal would cost him dear, 
Spotlight's been able to piece together the final days of his life. He spent Sunday, April the 2nd, in the company of his wife. She was collected by family members and returned to Belfast that evening. The next day, Dennis Donaldson was spotted by a neighbour. He passed in his car, going down towards the cottage, sometime in 11 and 12 in the morning. Now, that was, that was my only sight in that day. And it was definitely him? Definitely him, yeah. He was also seen in this DIY store in Glenties. He just came in to talk to Connie in the yard here about something. Uh, just came in and walked up the back of the shop and spoke to Connie and came back out again. There were no further sightings until later in the day when Dennis Donaldson drove into Glenties to get something to eat around 6 o'clock. This is where he went, Nighthawk's carry-out and cafe in the main street. He had a meal and then returned home. At around 8.30pm, a census collector called at his door. He invited him in and the pair chatted for around 45 minutes. Before the collector left, he gave Dennis Donaldson a form that had to be filled in. Donaldson hinted that he was going away and might not be around when the collector would return. So he took the man's mobile phone number to arrange collection at another time. At some stage over the next few hours, Dennis Donaldson received other visitors. As he slept, his killer approached the cottage along the single track. A rock was thrown through the window. As he went to investigate, two shots were fired through the door. One shot caught his hand, almost severing it. The killer reloaded the shotgun and the door was kicked in. Dennis Donaldson was shot again in the chest and the head. His body lay undisturbed until late afternoon when a neighbour drove past. She spotted the damaged door lying open and went in to investigate and then rang the guardie. News about the shooting quickly spread. Good evening. We start with breaking news. Dennis Donaldson, a former member of Sinn Féin, has been shot dead in County Donegal. Inevitably, the behaviour of the Sunday world came under media scrutiny and its expose dominated the airwaves. I think this was a bit of a coup for your paper and you just didn't really think the consequences for this poor man. He was uh, hunted by you and now he's been hunted by the IRA. I think it's comical that they're trying to lay the blame at the foot of the Sunday world. Why would you locate where that man was staying? You are as bad as anybody who shot him for singling them out. There are thousands, literally thousands, of whitewashed cottages and there was nothing apart from us saying that it was in Donegal to, 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 to pinpoint the location of the area or, or, or the exact spot where he was living. What of those who argue that your article set Dennis Donaldson up for murder? Well, I, I, I did not, you know, but m my story had nothing whatsoever to do with the murder of Dennis Donaldson and we were not responsible for, for setting him up for murder. The people who are responsible for Dennis Donaldson's murder are the people who went there, sought him out and, and pulled the trigger and ended his life. No one else. Journalist Hugh Jordan was not the only person put under the spotlight. Media attention focused on the man he took with him to Donegal. The Sunday World had hired a former RUC officer who now works as a security consultant. I engaged the services of this fella specifically to take the film for me, uh, nothing else. He didn't even know where he was. I'm sure he'd never been in Donegal in his life before. He had no local knowledge, person with local knowledge, and the ability to track down Dennis Donaldson locally was me. As the Gardaí launched their murder investigation, there was little to go on. At this stage, I'm keeping an open um, mind on the inquiry and following, following all avenues. And at this, at this stage, I cannot say the motive for this crime. At this stage, no, we're just, uh, the body has just left the scene and we're carrying out a more detailed examination of the scene. We've had search teams out since half seven this morning trying to collect all of the evidence. 
Dennis Donaldson's killer used a shotgun, a weapon not normally associated with terrorist attacks. Its use has made the murder hunt particularly difficult. Forensically, it makes it impossible. It's not like any other bullet if it's located in a body or out of woodwork or it can be the, what they call the markings on it can be ballistically proven to be fired from a certain weapon but not with a uh, shotgun of course it's uh, uh, maybe 120 lead pellets and they're of absolute worthless for identification purposes. So if you wanted to throw detectives off the trail you would use a shotgun? Absolutely yes absolutely. But Dennis Donaldson's killer may have made one mistake by leaving spent cartridges at the scene. I think that they left behind very, very vital evidence. And certainly, I, didn't, I wouldn't have expected a professional hit team to do that. And I think it, it happened as a result, possibly in a moment of panic, and possibly it is uh, pump action. If a pump action shotgun was used, the shells would have ejected at speed, and in the darkness, they would have been difficult to locate. But it was a mistake, and it certainly uh, gives good um, evidence. So who could have killed Dennis Donaldson? Initially, the finger of suspicion was pointed in the direction of the provisional IRA, the group most damaged by Dennis Donaldson's 20-year spying campaign. But within hours of his death becoming public, the IRA issued a statement saying no one from that organization was involved. That position was endorsed by the Donaldson family, who said they believed the IRA and said they'd been put in a difficult position as a direct result of the activities of the Special Branch and British intelligence agencies. But it's the IRA's long and bloody track record when it comes to killing informers that has prompted many to suggest the group had a hand in Dennis Donaldson's murder. Over the past 30 years, dozens of informers have been killed. The most recent was Eamon Collins, who was found beaten and stabbed near his Newry home in 1999. The IRA's Green Book states that informing carries the penalty of death, and within republicanism, it's seen as treason. Mr. Donaldson was a traitor on Irish history, and as an historian I'm more than aware of this, and as a republican I'm aware of this, Irish history is littered with bitter defeats which have been brought about as a consequence of the actions of traitors, informers, spies, call them what you will. So you believe he was murdered because he betrayed the Republican cause? No, I didn't say that at all. But I'm just saying to you the fact that he was a traitor means that uh, his death did not engender any particular sense of loss or deep grief, grief amongst the Republican faithful. When the IRA say they weren't involved, do you believe them? I do believe them, and the family of Dennis Donaldson also believe them. Because the IRA have told lies in the past. I, I believe the statement that the IRA have said. I believe that you know that they are in a new mode, and that has been recognised. Um, that, that you know that they have committed themselves to exclusively democratic and peaceful means. Last July, they have followed that up by putting their arms beyond use. You know, people on the ground, and I know myself. This is the constituency that I represent. Nobody here thinks that Republicans or the IRA were involved in the murder, murder of Dennis Donaldson. So if Republicans were not responsible, who was? Could it be that those who recruited Dennis Donaldson and ran him as an agent wanted to silence him? I think it's unlikely. You can never rule anything out. But to be honest, British intelligence don't have a track record of shooting rogue, rogue agents or killing them. Six months ago, Vi sat here and told you that Dennis Donaldson was working for British intelligence and collapsed a democratically elected uh, government. You know, nobody would believe me, but that was the reality. So in the, in, in the world of Dennis Donaldson and what he's been involved in colluding with British intelligence, I wouldn't rule out and I wouldn't speculate and I wouldn't just solely point the finger at Republicans. So who else was capable of carrying out the murder? Some within the Republican community say there is a feeling the Donaldson killing was about settling old scores. Well, my suspicion is that it was a freelance operation by people who were acting for motives of retribution and revenge. I tend to believe the IRA when they said that they didn't do it. Uh, on the other hand, I think that it's unlikely that loyalists or even dissenting Republicans or British intelligence, perhaps even for that matter, did it. I, I think it was people, former comrades 
of Dennis Donaldson's acting in a freelance capacity. Former comrade from the IRA. I would imagine it was former comrades from the IRA, but now ex-members of the IRA are and acting without the authorization of the IRA. Other seasoned observers of republicanism say there's little reason why the IRA would sanction the killing of Dennis Donaldson. Oh. In my view, it does not make strategic sense for that leadership to have uh, had Dennis Donaldson killed. Uh, but there are a lot of people out there who would be angry that Dennis Donaldson uh, escaped uh, retribution for uh, his activity, and they would have sufficient motive to kill him. And there are men. I, mean, I, I totally disagree with the kill. I, I, I think that I mean, Dennis Donaldson was someone who had social death, imposed upon him. There was no need for physical death. So could dissident Republicans be responsible? There's been no claim from either the continuity or the real IRA. And some argue that it suited dissidents better to keep Dennis Donaldson alive. I listened with interest to uh, a, a member of the so-called dissident Republican. And she said that Dennis Donaldson never did any damage to the continuity IRA or the so-called real IRA, the damage that he did to w was mainstream Republicans, the, 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 the people who would have most cause for hurt and concern and would wish him more damage must be within that family of mainstream Republicanism. 21 days into the murder hunt, the Gardaí say they still don't know who killed Dennis Donaldson. There have been some media reports that he was killed because he passed on information that led to the deaths of IRA personnel at Loch Gaul and Gibraltar. Garda sources have told Spotlight there's no evidence to suggest such links. With no eyewitnesses, limited forensic material, and a long list of suspects, the difficulties are obvious. They're up against it, and the likelihood, my straight answer is, it's going to be a very, very, if not impossible task. So you think it's likely that the killers will never be caught? I do. Dennis Donaldson's double life as an Irish Republican and a British spy may never be fully revealed. Do you regret, sir? Of course, I'll no. Do you think they stuck up you into the position you get into? Who's it? Well, the British. No, I don't. What happened happened, and that's it, mate. Uh. In life, Dennis Donaldson played many roles IRA man, Shinfield.